What is shaking, Internet? This is Salt's bringing you the How to Tank for Dummies Monk Basics Guide for Mists and Pandaria, the new expansion for World of Warcraft. In this guide, I will cover the basic concepts of how to effectively tank as a Brewmaster Monk. Uh, first, the basics. Monks are the new class in Mists and Pandaria, and Brewmaster is the new tanking spec for them. Monks rely on their new stagger mechanic to avoid most damage, but use dodge and parry to keep themselves alive as well and they can only wear leather, similar to druid tanks, bear tanks. Um, let's first talk about setup. Actually, before I do that, uh, the video you see in the background is me running through, uh, I believe, Stormstout Brewery. Yeah, that's it. Stormstout Brewery, um, in the most recent patch, I'm way too high level, but everybody else is with me, and it kind of gets messed up, but doesn't matter. Just I'm, I'm a terrible tank in the background. I'm still learning, but this guide is going to cover the basics. Uh, first, talk about setup before diving into how to tank as a monk. Uh, briefly covering stats, you mainly want to look for stamina and agility. Stamina is the big one for monks, as health will be what you need the most, but agility is going to be the best secondary main stat, if that makes any sense, because it'll help with the DPS and the dodging of the attacks. Um, mastery is going to benefit your shuffle percent. Uh, that's the current mastery increases your shuffle percentage, which we'll get to that in a little bit, so it's very nice, with dodge and parry being a up there as secondary stats. Um, I personally think parry takes slightly more precedence because you'll probably have less of it on your leather gear, um, depending on what we see in Miss Pandaria. I don't know about all the gear yet. Uh, glyphs are largely a matter of preference or situation for monks in all classes now in Mist of Pandaria. Um, I'd say that Glyph of Stone Skin is a good all-time glyph. Uh, it reduces bleed effects by 20% when you use Fortifying Brew. Um, that's just a generally good one. I mean, it's not, there's nothing bad about it, so there you go. Uh, Glyph of Guard is not very good in my opinion, but a tanky one nonetheless. Uh, it changes Guard to only soak magic damage, and it gives a 10% boost, uh, which I'm sure will come in handy in some fights, but overall, it's meh. Um, Glyph of Leer of the Ox can be good. Uh, it gives you a bonus taunt ability that allows your Ox statue to taunt and slow an enemy, but I don't think this works on raid bosses, making it kind of pointless if you're or raiding or anything like that. Uh, Glyph of Fortifying Brew is a interesting one. It gives 5% bonus damage reduction when you use the move, but it reduces the bonus health to 10% from 20% of your entire health. Uh, doing the math, I can't find any way this is better unless your healers are pressed to heal the entire raid and damage reduction would help them keep up better. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, Glyph of Dizzying Haze is an overall good glyph, uh, if you can't find one you want. Uh, this will help with big trash mobs, because it d adds two stacks in one instead of one, so you can hold threat and uh, keep stacks up even better. Uh, glyph of Zen Meditation might be extremely awesome, uh, allowing you to move while casting it. Uh, it all depends on if you aren't getting melee hit, um, and if this move hasn't gotten severely changed since the mob beta, <laughs> which it likely will. Okay, now let's cover your monk, your monk tanking talent options. Um, in tier 1, uh, I would recommend Celerity and Momentum, because they're both good options. I think Celerity is slightly more useful in getting where you want quickly, um, just using more rolls, whereas Momentum is better for covering more ground. So I probably would say Celerity overall is good, is the best. Uh, in tier 2, I think Zen, Zen Sphere is your best bet. Uh, still, Chi Burst seems to be a nice alternative that you don't have to think about as much and you don't have to waste as much Chi. Um, in Tier 3, I personally prefer Power Strikes because it gives the most Chi overall. Uh, if you like Chi Brew, it's a nice addition of another cooldown in case you of, of emergencies or something like that. Uh, in, in Tier 4, it doesn't matter much at all at the moment. Uh, I'd go with Deadly Reach for long-range stuns in, in case an ad gets away from you, but yeah. Uh, they're all situational in good and specific ways. Uh, in Tier 5, I would say Damp and Harm wins out in almost all cases. Uh, Diffuse Magic is useful in fights where magic damage is high, uh, but Damp and, Damp and Harm is probably better all-around talent. Um, in Tier 6, I'd say Zwen the White Tiger is the easiest and best all-around. Chi Torpedo is not good as a tank because you'd confuse the party or raid with all the turning on the bosses. Uh, but Rushing Jade Wind could be good if you want to use Spinning Crane Kick a lot. Um, well, now that you're glyphed, statted, and talented, let's talk about how to actually perform as a monk tank. First, let's talk about what you need to watch as a monk tank. Stagger is the main new mechanic for monk tanks that will allow you to survive as a tank. 
um, when you're when you're in your sturdy ox stance, the tanking stance, uh, you will take 70% of all damage up front from all attacks and stagger the remaining 30%, taking it as a damage over time over the next 10 seconds. Stagger is the main reason you can stay alive through big hits. Uh, additionally, you have a shuffle buff that gets applied whenever you use the blackout kick, um, uh, the blackout kick move ability. Uh, the shuffle buff actually gives you a 20% additional stagger, making 50% or half of the damage go to a DOT. Uh, simply put, you want shuffle to be up 100% of the time. To do this is very simple. Every time you use blackout kick, it adds 6 seconds to the shuffle buff. Um, Previously, there was a limit on this, but in the current build of the beta, there is no limit on this. So basically, every time you use Blackout Kick, it will always add 6 seconds. So, spam Blackout Kick, you always want to keep Shuffle Buff up 100% of the time. Um, that's why, for priority number 1, use Blackout Kick whenever you're about to run out of Shuffle. Or, if you just happen to have additional Chi. Additionally, Monks have Energy as a resource, and Chi as an additional resource. Energy works just like rogues and feral cat druids. Uh, you spend it, and it comes back fairly rapidly, about 10 a second-ish. Uh, there are four major moves as a tank that use energy. Um, keg Smash, Expel Harm, Jab, and Dizzying Haze. There are several others, but these are the ones that I'm going to cover, and that are the core abilities that you're going to use. Keg Smash is your best move. You should use this move on cooldown. Uh, the only thing that's more important than using Keg Smash is keeping Shuffle up or a cooldown if you're going to die or taunt. You know, if you taunt if you don't have threat, but you get the picture. Uh, Expel Harm is your next important move. You should use this on cooldown as well, as it does some damage and heals you a little bit. Um, jab should be used whenever you have enough energy, and Expel Harm and Keg Smash are off cool are on cooldown. No, you can't use them. Um, all, all of these moves generate chi. Uh, one to two chi, depending on how you've uh, talented and other things. Uh, chi is what you use for blackout kick, and therefore you want to use. You need to keep up shuffle, so you want to have chi to keep, use blackout kick to keep up shuffle. It's all a big cycle. Additionally, chi is going to be used for guard and purifying brew. Okay, so we talked about how to use your energy, aka keg smash, expel harm, then jab, and discussed that blackout kick needs to be used to keep up the shuffle buff. Now let's talk about Tiger Palm and Guard. Uh, whenever you can't do anything else, you should be spamming Tiger Palm. It's a completely free move. Uh, it used to cost Chi, but now it does not cost anything at all. Uh, it's a free move that does damage and gives you stacks, um, as well as reduces enemy armor, I believe. Something like that. Uh, it, the stacks do something, but I can't remember what they do, to be perfectly honest. When you have three stacks of Tiger Palm, you should use Guard. Uh, it will light up, and it'll say, blink, 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 use Guard, here it is. It, it's... it's extra, because every stack of Tiger Palm up to 3 will give Guard a 5% buff. Uh, guard is a move that basically gives you a little damage absorbing shield, so you want to have 3 stacks of Tiger Palm before using Guard to maximize that shield. It gives you 15% bonus if you have 3 stacks. Um, guard costs 2 Chi, so make sure you have enough for it and a Blackout Kick if your Shuffle is running low, because your Shuffle is more important. Um, finally discussing the core abilities is Dizzying Haze and Breath of Fire. Uh, these are your main AoE moves if you're fighting any kind of big uh, big pack of mobs. Uh, Dizzying Haze is a move that allows you to throw a keg at a target area, doing some damage and applying some debuffs to the enemies in that area. Um, it costs 20 energy, meaning it's pretty spammable. Uh, you don't have to worry much about the debuff, as Keg Smash applies the same debuff. But what's more important to note about the ability is that it actually generates a lot of threat. Uh, if necessary, you can spam this ability as an AoE taunt to hold aggro on a large group of mobs. If you watch the Storm Sout Brewery um, video in the background, you can actually see me fighting uh, the hop about the, at the second boss, the hopping bunny guy, uh, and I spam that move ridiculously to hold threat on everything. It's very easy to hold threat on a large group of mobs with this, or even a single mob if you <laughs> if you really need it. If you can't taunt, throw these things, and you get you will hold aggro, at least currently. Uh, Breath of Fire is an AoE damage move that does damage to everything in front of you, uh, and it does additional damage over time to any targets that have the Dizzying Haze debuff, that uh, debuff that gets applied from Keg Smash or Dizzying Haze, the move we were just talking about. Uh, let's review briefly before moving on, because that's quite a lot to take in, and uh, talk about setup. Keg Smash should be assigned to 1 and used on cooldown. Expel Harm should be on 2 and also be used on cooldown. 
uh, Tiger Palm should be assigned to 5 and be spammed whenever you can't do anything else. Also, try to keep Tiger Palm at 3 stacks if you can. Uh, Blackout Kick should be assigned to 4 and should be used whenever you have less than, you know, uh, probably 3 or 4 seconds remaining on Shuffle. If, if you're running out of Shuffle, you need to use Blackout Kick now. Uh, jab should be assigned to 3 and used whenever Keg Smash and Expel Harm uh, 1 and 2 are on cooldown. Uh, guard should be assigned to 6 and used whenever you have 3 stacks of Tiger Palm. Hopefully, that's just on cooldown every 30 seconds. Uh, Breath of Fire should be assigned to 7 and should be used for AoE mobs. Uh, Dizzying Haze should be 8 and also be used for AoE mobs. Technically, these can be intermingled. It doesn't matter. 7 and 8 are going to be your AoE buttons if you're going along with my guide. Um, <coughs> so, you need to hit 1 and 2 on cooldown. Four when you have um, when you're about to run out of shuffle. Three if you uh, if one and two are on cooldown, you got plenty of that and you have energy. Um, five at any time because it's free. Six when you have three tiger palms and it's off cooldown. Uh, and then use seven and eight when you're fighting big packs, or you can use eight as an emergency AOE taunt. Phew. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about our damage reduction cooldowns. Uh, the moves we have here are Purifying Brew, Avert Harm, Zen Meditation, Fortifying Brew, Elusive Brew, and Gift of the Ox. Uh, first up is Purifying Brew. This nifty little move has a 1 second cooldown that costs 1 chi to remove all of your stagger debuff. Uh, Blizzard was nice enough to color code the stagger debuff, so I'm going to go ahead and say whenever your stagger gets red, use Purifying Brew. Uh, use it at yellow if you have lots of chi. Uh, especially use this after a big attack from raid bosses, etc. Uh, I don't know the the core mechanics of it, but uh, Purifying Brew will turn red if it's doing more than a percentage of your health, I believe. And it'll turn yellow if it is doing more than a percentage of your health every second. Something like that. Along those lines. Um, okay. Next up is Elusive Brew. Um, this is a little different mechanic in that you actually gain charges in Elusive Brew when you have perform critical hits with your weapon. Uh, then you spend those charges when you use the ability. Uh, you get 30% bonus dodge for one second for every charge that you spend. Uh, it maxes at 15 charges, and the move has a cooldown of 9 seconds. Uh, this is generally you know, just as a rule of thumb, use this whenever you have 6 charges or more. Don't use this with less than 6 charges, because less than that will basically give you no real use out of it. Uh, you want to use it to take a couple of hits and actually dodge them. Um, if it gets to 15, use this. Like, there's no reason for you not to use this at 15. Uh, I am probably a bad tank in this video, and I will... I'm not very good at using this at all. So, uh, yeah. Either way, Avert Harm. Um, Avert Harm is actually a very dangerous cooldown you have. It reduces all damage for you and all nearby allies, uh, that, like within 10 yards, like melee range. A little bit, a little bit longer than melee range. Uh, by 50%, so it reduces all the damage by 50% to everybody in there. Uh, then half of the remaining damage for everyone goes to you. Uh, it gets cancelled if you hit less than 10% health, but it can actually kill you very fast if you use it at the wrong time, especially as a tank. Uh, still, it's nice to use if um, there's single target damage going on. If you're the only person getting hit, you can actually use this to just simply reduce 50% damage to you, period. That seems pretty rare, but just, you know, just so you know. Uh, Zen Meditation is a big cooldown that can be used. Uh, Zen Meditation actually reduces damage by 90% to you uh, while it's there, but it's channeled, meaning that you can't move or do anything uh, while you're while you're casting it. However, if you take a melee hit, it is immediately cancelled. Um, it also redirects some spells to you, uh, up to five, I believe, like some spells hit you instead of uh, the intended target, affecting effectively making you like a, night li a lightning rod. Uh, this could be very useful if you're not actively tanking, so like in, you know, LFR, you know, we have one boss, and then a second tank is taunting it and, and tanking it, you can actually use it to reduce 90% damage to you and uh, have five spells hit you, so you can actually use it as a lightning rod in that instance. Um, but it actually might just be effective as a one-hit wonder, uh, because if you use it, you will reduce the next one hit for 90%, no matter what, like, so you can use it just to instantly reduce one hit for 90%. Great, why not? Um, Gift of the Ox is the next one. It's not actually a cooldown, but it's a kind of mechanic that you have as a Brewmaster Monk tank uh, that you should know about. 
there is a 1% chance any damage you do will spawn a little orb, a little green orb uh, sphere thing close to you. Uh, if you walk through these orbs, you'll be healed. These orbs stay around for a little while, so you can let them uh, stock up and just appear over a while. I, I don't know how long they last, maybe a minute or two, maybe less, I don't know. Uh, but you shouldn't wait too long. Uh, you shouldn't have to do much more than strafe a little to the right and left to grab these. Uh, important to note is that if you have guard up, these will actually heal you by 30% more. All of your self heals heal you by 30% more if you have guard up. Um, let's see. Fortifying Brew is your last big cooldown. It'll increase your health by 20%, your stagger percentage by 20%. You know, if you have shuffle up, that means that 70% of all hits that you're taking are going to stagger, or to shuffle, or stagger, yeah, that's what I, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. And it reduces all damage to you by 20% for 20 seconds. This is a big cooldown. Um, keep this for emergencies or huge damage spikes. Um, I do remember that you'll likely have Zen Sphere and Dampen Harm or Diffuse Magic from Talents. Uh, these are additional cooldowns abilities that you should use if you're talented into them. Uh, but they're mostly up to you. Um, the last abilities I'm going to talk about are mostly utility. Uh, provoke is your basic taunt. Uh, eight seconds. Hey, there you go. Uh, it can be used as an AoE taunt if you cast it on your Ox statue. Oh, speaking of that, you have a Summon Black Ox statue, which should always be used at the beginning of a boss fight. Uh, you throw it out there. Um, the Ox Statue doesn't actually do much for you, but every time you do enough damage, it'll put a small shield on your ally, so always keep it up. Uh, please ignore me, because I'm terrible at putting this Ox Statue up, but you should put it up before every boss fight, because it lasts five minutes or something like that. Additionally, if you took Leer of the Black Ox Glyph, um, you can use that to taunt your target to attack your statue. Uh, I'm pretty sure this doesn't work on big bosses, uh, and, but if it does, they'll change it very quickly because then you can taunt, and then you can have your statue taunt, and then you can taunt, and then you can have your statue taunt, and you can <laughs> do one person kiting, and that's just not right. Uh, finally, you should make sure to keep up Legacy of the, em of the Emperor. Uh, it's the, your the, like stat buff skill. Uh, that's your one stat buff that you can do. And you should be in your sturdy ox stance at all times. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this guide for monk tanks in Mists of Pandaria. Uh, please like, favorite, subscribe, all that jazz. And as always, you keep it salty, Internet. No, no, no. Yeah. No. Pepper.